This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to find the sum of an infinite geometric series. And we're going to arrive at the formula as well. Uh, all right, well, first of all, we need uh, to see what is the formula for the sum of a finite or, you know, a, a set number of terms. Well, it turns out that here's the formula. Here's a formula we could use to find the sum of a series like this one. Let's say we start off with 1 plus a half plus a fourth plus an eighth and so on. Uh, well, when we look at this series, and a series is just a sum of numbers, uh, we know this is geometric because uh, if I were to multiply the first number or the first term, which we call a1, if I multiply that one by a half, I get a half. So if I multiply it by a half, I get that. If I take the second term, a2, and I multiply that by a half, I get a fourth, and so on. So that's what seems to be the glue that's holding all these terms together as we go down the list. Just keep on multiplying by a half. Now we call that half the common ratio. So for this particular series, I know the common ratio is a half. It's the number that we use to multiply to get all the subsequent numbers. All right, well, here's the formula we use if we're trying to find the sum of a finite uh, series. So in other words, let's say that my series didn't go on forever. Let's say that there was only uh, five numbers in our series. So that would be one, a half, a fourth, an eighth, and plus a sixteenth. We're going to add up those five numbers. Well, I would just use the formula. So I would punch in for the five, some of these five numbers. I'm going to put my first term as one. I put in one minus our common ratio. And let's see, I, n, number of terms is 5. And I got 1 minus a half in the denominator. Okay, so I punch all these numbers into a calculator, and the calculator spits out 1.93750. Uh, okay, likewise, I'm going to do this again, except now I'm going to do it for n equals 10. Okay, so if I do that, uh, let's see, I got 10 numbers first term is 1 still. I got 1 minus a half. I got 10 numbers I'm adding together. Oops. Let's try to do that a little bit neater. Okay, so I got 1 minus a half over here. So I spit this into a calculator and the calculator gives me 1.99804. Alright, let's try it one more time. Let's try it now for n equals 15. So I got, oops, let's look that look like an S, not a 5. So the sum of the first 15 numbers, well, it's still going to be 1, first term, 1 minus a half, common ratio is a half, and now you got 15 numbers to add together, all over 1 minus a half. Okay, again, I plug this into a calculator, and I usually like to use 0.5 when I use the calculator. It's just easier to use instead of the fraction. But now the calculator spits out a 1.99994 if you round it. Okay, so we're just rounding to the fifth decimal place. Now, if you're looking at these digits, you're going to see that it looks like we're hitting and uh, on a certain sum, it seems like we're headed somewhere, and it doesn't look like this number is going and growing to some wild amount. It looks like, you know, hey, it's 1.9, it's 1.99, almost, you know, th th this number is starting to become strangely close to the value 2. And we're thinking, hmm, why is that? Why does it look like we're adding an infinite number of numbers, but we're not getting an infinite sum? It looks like we're getting a we're headed towards a finite sum. Well, we have to really take a look at this formula to understand why that appears to be the case. Um, all right, so I'm going to clear this all out, and then we'll look a little bit more closely at that formula. All right, let's, let's look closely at this formula, and, and let's really uh, focus our attention on this R value. 
Okay, let's, let's focus on this part of the formula. Uh, it turns out that that's kind of an interesting place to look because, um, so if we take a look at the value r, our common ratio, and uh, we basically take this r and we take it to various powers. So if we were to take, uh, let's say, that one half and we raise it to the fifth power, it's going to get very small. The value becomes point three one two five. Likewise, I like to see what happens when you have different values, like we raise it to the tenth power and we raise it to the fifteenth power. Well, let's see what those values are. Well, it could be seen that after you pull up various powers, that that value seems to be diminishing and it's shrinking, which makes sense. If you take a value that's less than one and you keep on raising it to various powers, we can kind of see even by looking at the series that that value is going down and shrinking. So that one half raised to a certain power, as the power gets large, we're, we're hardly adding anything as we go on. So if this number was one half to the, like the millionth power, I'm hardly adding anything at all. As a matter of fact, it's microscopically small, as if I were to think of it as a size, you know, a physical size or a dimension. So I'm really not adding much. So that means as this n gets larger and larger, uh, for very small values of r, it shrinks to nothing. And that's kind of very important. Okay, so I'm going to clear this out and we're going to look at that uh, also. So the way mathematicians talk about it, uh, they would use this kind of notation. They would say, uh, what is this value going to be? In other words, what is this, this formula? If I were to take this formula and I were to find this formula, I want to find out what happens as uh, n gets larger and larger. Well, it turns out that for specific regions or for specific values for r, um, we just see here that r has got to be less than 1 for this to work. And, as a matter of fact, it's got to be greater than negative 1. So when r, the absolute value of r, is less than 1, what's going to happen is that r value raised to greater and greater powers, this value over here is going to shrink to nothing. Literally, as we get closer and closer and closer to infinity, this value just fades away. So this becomes zero. That whole thing there becomes zero. So we're going to have a1 over 1 minus r, because this value shrinks to zero. And, and that's what we're left with. And numerically, it does appear to work. If we were to put in values, like in this case, if we put in our first value was 1, we put 1 minus a half, we're going to get 1 divided by a half, and 1 divided by a half is like 1 times 2, or 2. And that's the value that we were headed towards. So this does work. Now, of course, the caveat is that r can only be certain values. When r is outside this range, it turns out that this, the, uh, the size of the subsequent terms will get larger and larger and larger, and there will be no finite sum. So th it only works for those values of r. So there you go. So the formula we would use for a infinite series, so now I'm going to use a very special symbols here. Uh, they just take the first term, and you divide it by 1 minus r. 1 minus the common ratio, and there you go. You've got the, the sum of all of those infinite terms. Okay, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other videos, interactive quizzes, and lessons. Take care.